hello and welcome back and today it is another 5x5. Five five. Today I want to talk about the brand new Sonality DS1821 Plus. It's a new 8-bay releasing right at the end of 2020 and today I want to talk about 5 things I love about the device and 5 things I am less keen on. If you've not seen these videos before and you don't know the formula, let's be honest it's not exactly brain science but a quick disclaimer straight off the bat i don't have the unit physically here in the office i have got a unit it is being reviewed but unfortunately because of our shr testing i can't disconnect it right now and the problem is rather than let you guys have to wait longer for this video it will make a lot more sense to get it out there before i get the hardware review and stuff done first so let's go ahead with this 5x5 five five. also another quick little disclaimer if you did watch our 1621 5x5 five five video pretty much with the exception of one all of the 5x5 five five is the same so if you've seen that video maybe skip this one because you kind of know the results already but without further ado let's get on it reason number one that I quite like this device is of course that Ryzen processor. Synology making the jump away from the Atom series of devices, let's face it, it's about bloody time they did that. They took way too long to do that and when they finally made the jump, they did the jump properly, moving over to that quad-core V1500B processor. That CPU gets the job done. It's a much higher score there on CPU benchmark and in tests from Plex Media Server to virtualization to the Synology collaboration suite of applications and DSM performance in general inside and outside of caching, it has to be said that that processor does get the job done and in the 1821 when everyone heard about that 6 bay that came with that processor, a number of you were just like, well 6 is nice but I want 8. So the 1821 gives us that Ryzen and more storage to play with. Reason number two that you might want to get the 1821, and one of the reasons I like it is, of course, Synology Hybrid RAID, the fluid RAID system that I am still, to this day, astounded that no one has got behind right now. The only company I've seen approach fluid RAID is Drobo, and Drobo is a brand that, I don't know if you've noticed, they've kind of gone a bit quiet recently. Um, now... Uh, Synology Hybrid RAID gives you the ability to mix and match drives and in an 8-bay that is especially attractive. So whether you fully populate a device, partially populate a device and then want to add drives later or if it's fully populated, exchange bigger drives later on. The ability to modify the amount of storage in your RAID configuration with bigger drives and allow the RAID to take advantage of more and larger drives is advantageous. Traditional RAID will see larger drives only as the smallest drive. So if you had an 8-bay filled with one 1 terabyte drive and seven 10 TBs, which will be weird, if you did that, a traditional RAID would only see 8 TB. It would only see every drive as 1 TB. SHR always allows one drive's worth of redundancy equivalent to the largest drive. So if you filled the rest of that device with 10 TBs, you'd still have 10 TB of redundancy but it would still then be able to take advantage of the larger drives. SHR being on this 8-bay, I know you're thinking, well, it's a Synology NAS, they've all got that. It really isn't the case. A lot of the larger Synology NASs do not have SHR on board because Synology feel that SHR, because of that fluidity of RAID, the performance is slightly lower than traditional RAID. Also, Synology feel that larger, more enterprise arrays are generally purchased fully populated, and when they do replace drives, they replace all the drives at once. Now, that's just not a guess. That's Synology themselves quoting why SHR is not in all of their devices, but it's good that it is featured here on the 8-bay device. Reason number three that you might like the 1821 as much as I do is because of NVMe SSD caching. Now, whether it's DSM 6.2 or 7 on the way, where the hell is 7? SSD caching is something that is now pretty much everywhere in network attached storage. We've reached a point where improving the network interfaces on the back end there, and yes, I will touch on that later, um, is improving a lot more affordably so that the internal performance of most of these NAS systems need to be improved as well. And you can't just rely on CPUs anymore. You need to give that storage a good area, a good sandbox uh, buffering area to play with and the memory and the CPU to do its thing. And NVMe SSD cache on this device allows you to not only have the eight bays of storage, but two NVMe's installed inside and therefore present their improved IOPS, read-write performance and low latency to benefit the larger storage hard drive array. 
Very useful indeed, and definitely a feature I'm glad is on this 8 bay because it was sorely missed in the predecessor for those that took advantage of upgraded NICs or even link aggregation on the lowest level. Reason number four, and I almost said it there, that you might like the 1821 Plus is that PCIe slot. It has not only an upgradable PCIe slot, but Synology went in big with a PCIe Gen 3 times 8 slot, up to 8,000 megabytes per second throughput between a connected card and the host system there on, a, on that lane. It is a fantastic upgrade slot, and that allows you to not only add 10G, which is nice, of course, 1,000 megs, but you can add a two port 10G, 2,000 megs, that's lovely. Or you can add a 20, 25, 40 GBE network interface ports with QSFP cards that could allow two 40 gig ports on this device and still have full transmission. Bear in mind, of course, you've only got eight base, so saturating that bandwidth is going to be nightmarishly difficult, but that upgradable card there allows a lot of opportunities down the line. And hopefully one day, one day, Synology will let people take advantage of faster access storage cards with inbuilt NVMe slots on them in that lane that could really take advantage of that 8,000 megabytes, uh, megabytes per second throughput there on that PCIe lane. Reason number five, that you're probably going to like the 1821 Plus, and this is more about people that like Synology as a brand generally and have decided to invest in their hardware. Where it sits in the portfolio is very neat. I've said this every few years, or whenever they release an 8 Bay Plus series NAS, it sits really, really well between... You've got the 2-bay, the 4-bay, the 5-bay, the 6-bay, the 8-bay, the 12-bay, etc., etc., in the desktop form, at least. Now, because of that, they've restructured their parameters in the Plus series, where you've actually got a really nice equilibrium between each of the tiers of their storage portfolio. The consequence is that the price difference between each tier is actually quite relative to the size, not just the number of bays, but the storage capabilities and the hardware that surround them at each tier. And this 8 bay is a lovely price point between all of them, where you can just go, that is my entry point there. Very, very interesting. Very, it gives you the features you need for business, certainly, and that CPU and hardware combination inside, and upgradability with everything from ECC memory inside to the upgradability of that PCIe card and your storage means that the price when you're getting in that portfolio, it's very well placed. And that's why the um, 8 Bay series from Synology is always typically done well, and I think will do better than ever now, because it's fleshed out the portfolio on either side a great deal better. But <clears throat> it's worth highlighting it's not all good, of course. There are things about the 1821 Plus that I do not like, and I'm sure a number of you would agree. Reason number one, that you might not like the 1821 and it's not the one for you, let's get it out there. It's one gigabit Ethernet. It's one GBE NAS box in 2020. Come on, guys. And this is an 8 bay as well, so you cannot give people the excuse about the saturation point of those 8, of those eight storage bays. This is an 8 bay device. It's got eight storage bays, one GBE at this price point. I think that's a little bit mm, less keen on. 2.5 GBE, and we've got dedicated 10 GBE devices now with the 1621XS knocking around about 16 to 1800 quid if you shop around. That's got 10G on board. That's got five years of warranty and a Xeon and a bunch of that stuff. And at that point, that's when things go a bit crazy on the portfolio scale. Because this being a 1 GBE NAS, at that price, you know, near enough a grand without the storage. That's a big ask at 1 GBE on an 8-bay device, and that's definitely one of the things I don't like about this device, and I really thought this gen would be when Synology would turn things around a 1 GBE in their uh, Disk Station Plus series devices. Reason number two, you might not like this device as much, and again, this is far more general to the whole range, and it's one that I say a lot, so I'm sorry to keep saying it to you guys, but those NVMEs only being used for caching, not a fan, not a fan. I get it. And some of the lower tier Celeron devices where the PCIe lanes that are presented to the NVMe bays, you've probably only got you know PCIe 2x4 or you can get away with 
maybe something a little better, but generally on those Celeron devices, because of the PCIe lanes of those CPUs and the chipset, the result is they can't get the most out of those NVMEs on the smaller tiers, and therefore, given them as raw storage, Synology might not want to be the brand that gives PCIe uh, NVMe M2 bays and then saying, oh, but it's throttled because of the CPU lanes. I get that, but on this system, on this Ryzen, there's enough to play with to be able to take advantage of those NVMe bays for storage. Maybe not PCIe three times four or greater, but definitely close enough to justify their existence as a storage pool, as a volume, and therefore as raw storage capabilities. And I know a number of you will say, what's the point if it's only one GBE? There's still a lot you can do to, with internal performance on those NVMe's. VMs, Plex Media Server, and high performance databases would take advantage of the NVMe performance internally. So it's a real shame that Synology are blanket sticking to this rule that NVMe bays, uh, U2 NVMe, are only being utilized for caching. Now, they've got a flash station series that takes advantage of um, SATA SSDs, and they have SATA and SAS based devices that can take advantage of SAS, SATA, um, sorry, SAS 2.5 inch SSDs for storage. So I don't think it's a giant leap of imagination. And before anyone says in the comments, there's GitHub uh, patches that allow you to use the Synology NVMe base, that is true. And I did want to make a video about it a while ago, but when we did the testing, it just wasn't stable enough and I didn't want to recommend that so until Synology sign off on an official way of doing it if they do I'm going to stick by this NVMe for only being for caching that sucks guys so reason number three that you might not want to buy the 1821 right now at the end of 2020 or during 2021 is the expandability now on the plus side this eight bay can have another five bays battered onto each side via the connection of eSATA. That's eSATA 6 gigabits per second connectivity. And those are five bay JBOD devices, the DX517. So you've got eight bays of storage, chuck on another five, chuck on another five, you've got 18 potential bays of storage. And you can spread your storage across them. And with the benefits of SHR, it gets even better. But there is a 12 bay expansion out there known as the DX1215 uh, or DX1217. DX1, uh, one, uh, DX1, these expansion devices in rack mount and desktop form, a lot of them use an external SAS type connector that is obviously what you're going to need when you've got that larger amount of storage there. I will double check that external connection as well. Um, but the external connection there is greater than that six gigabits per second of eSATA. Now, I get it, you would use two eSATA connections on this device to add five and five because you wouldn't go greater than that for two five bay devices, but Given this 8-bay is for business, let's be honest, we've moved out of home, you know, on the upper echelons of prosumer and into business and enterprise, or maybe sole working photographers and stuff like that, or video editors. This is where two 5-bay expansions with their own dedicated mains power on them, it's nowhere near as desirable as adding a 12-bay expansion device with a single power connection there to this 8-bay. Now, it's not impossible. We've seen other devices take advantage of that large storage arrangement with Atom chipsets like the 2419 Plus. It's not impossible, but it is certainly something they've kept in within their portfolio. And it's a real shame that there isn't more flexibility in that expansion other than having the two five bays. Yes, it's gradual. I know a number of you will say an eight bay that you can add five and add five is a more gradual upgrade. I get that. But a 12 bay that you can gradually add drives to as you need them, I would argue is way, way more gradual because it allows a spectrum of going eight bays, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way up. And I think going up to 20 drives long term makes more sense. Why it's not possible in this, who knows? Maybe they can tell us, but that's my third reason. Reason number four that you might not buy the 1821 right now is because it doesn't have a GPU equipped CPU. I'd like that CPU, I really do. But a CPU inside this 8 bay not having um, any kind of embedded graphics, and there are an embedded graphics version of this um, um, Ryzen SoC processor. The fact that it doesn't have embedded graphics, I think is a little short term. And I get why, in a way, Synology have done that because of their portfolio. They've left embedded graphics at uh, the lower end tiers there that have got your 920s, your 720s, your Celeron systems. They even dabbled with Pentiums uh, back in the 916. I get that. 
and at business. They look at file processing more than anything and hand file handling. So that's why you get your Xeons and indeed the Ryzen SoC. But for me, not having an embedded graphics CPU on this 8 bay, given the number of people, despite business concerns, that will utilize this device for home media, for Plex Media Server, for um, editing of visual files, I think a non-embedded um, CP, uh, graphically embedded CPU is a little bit short term, and particularly if you're going to take advantage of 10 GPE video editing, uh, you know, and editing photos and stuff like that, and thumbnail generation and stuff like that, shadow files, that sort of thing. I think a graphic embedded CPU would be far more useful in those concerns, and it's one of the limitations, I think, one of the few limitations, I would say, of that um, cost-effective server-grade CPU inside this device. Reason number five, and the final one, why you might buy the 1821, uh, you might not wanna buy the 1821, is it is that metal chassis. Once you reach the eight bay tier, you are dealing with enterprise, again, I'm gonna stop saying that word, but you are dealing with business level stuff. And Synology deign that this is a device where you need um, this kind of metal chassis. Now, whether that is for heat dissipation or it's a design and image thing, I'm not sure. But both the, the six bays and the eight bays are all in metal. I've had them running them, uh, running them here in the studio. And when I've had the four bays in plastic chassis and this one in the metal, the metal ones just make more noise and it's unavoidable. And whether you are using non-enterprise grade um, hard drives, you know, like WD Gold or Pro Series, um, Iron Wolves or Reds. Even if you don't use noisy drives, this system generally has more of a harm and clicks and whirs and vibration than that of the smaller plastic chassis. Now, I get it. Some people prefer metal chassis, once again, because of the more rugged nature, they feel they've got a more rugged and secure product, and of course, the heat dissipation that comes from it. This is a three-year warranty device like the majority of the Plus series, so I don't think we can talk about rugged and stuff like that, and maybe because of the eight bays, the heat generated, you know, heat dissipation is something we should consider, so I know a number of you are thinking, yeah, metal, go all the way, that's not a minus for me, and I get that, but I do know there's a large contingent of people that will buy an 8-bay like this, chuck in a 10G card, chuck in a dual port 10G, something like that, and want to edit on this device on the fly, and they won't be going through a switch, they will be directly connecting to this device, and those users are going to be able to hear it, you're going to be in relative close proximity unless you run a 20 meter cat cable and you users will come away from this a little bit disappointed by their metal chassis but this has been my 5v5 five reasons to buy the ds 1821 plus and five reasons not to let me know what you guys think and do check out the article in the description click like if you enjoyed the video click subscribe to learn more and i will see you next time